Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barron. Welcome. Today, I would like to clarify a term that I use an awful lot. And, uh, and so just to make some fine, finer distinctions on it. And that word is coherence. It's something that I kind of really brought out in Taiji Twin through the Western Gate and, and have been using it quite a lot since then. And it's kind of at the core of what I'm what I'm talking about. And so the distinction I want to make here is between coherent chi or coherent energy and coherent forms. And so when we talk about coherent energy, we're talking about when things are pulsing together and and the energy is moving in the same direction at the same amplitude and we get the kind of a laser effect that is light moving in in, in a very concentrated directed way and is able to take on forms to uh, take on qualities rather that um, it doesn't have in its more dispersed state and so taking that analogy and putting it with the body mind it's like the energy or the chi that animates our physical form, if we can get it to harmonize better together, then things work better and it takes on qualities that it doesn't have in a more dispersed state. So we, I draw a distinction between coherence and non-coherence or non-coherent energy. And that is when energy is dispersed or fragmented, uh, let's say you're very anxious about something and your thoughts are buzzing around and, and you're, you're really on edge, that energy tends to be a little more dispersed. It's, it's not very coherent. It's not moving together in a harmonic way. Whereas if you're feeling quite directed and, uh, and calm-centered, Relax, but also energized, then you can say the energy is more coherent. That is, it's, we have more of our, that laser effect. We're able to create effects with our energy that we can't in our ordinary fragmented state. So then we have the, um, so that's coherent energy. When I talk about coherent forms, what I'm talking about there is whenever things move into a state of being, that is, they you a form takes uh, comes into being as that form, as that thing, and it becomes non coherent as it moves away from being that thing. So you have and you have coherence and non coherence happening all day, every day and it's happening in your body, things are coming into being and dissolving, going away. So let's say you're, um, you're making a, uh, a vegetable soup, okay? You, you have these forms, which are uh, uh, like, um, you know, your carrots and potatoes and, you know, this, um, carrots and potatoes and, and one, so, well, we, we've got these forms that were living forms. And what are we going to do? We're going to destroy them as forms. We're going to cut them up into little pieces. And, and so they no longer are that form. They, they have moved from coherence into non-coherence. And that's as a necessary step to go to, the, to making the soup, which we throw that together and, and cook it up. And, and as we do that, we're creating a new form. We're taking the form that used to be these these animate these, these creatures, and now we're taking them and making them into soup. And so we have uh, this new form, which is a vegetable soup. We say, yay, new form is up. Well, let's destroy that. We're going to eat it. So we we take those components and chew them up and swallow them and break them down into the nutrients to work our bodies. We're creating more non-coherence again as those forms, as that form of the soup is becoming non-coherent. 
which then it moves into the to create a coherence in my in my body. So as I as I eat, I say, "Yay, I got nutrients!" And so I have there, it has become part of the coherence that is my body. So that's a that's an analogy that that we kind of follow all day as we create forms, put our body into shapes and and do things with it that create these coherent forms and then we destroy them. And so it, I may have given the impression uh, from the way I talk because I emphasize coherence so much going from non-coherence to coherence as that part of the uh, that part of the cycle that I may have given the impression that coherence good, non-coherence bad, and it's not the case. What happens is that they are both happening. We are coherence is moving toward being, non-coherence toward non-being, and that's the essential pulse of of all things. You know, living and non-living is the going into being and going into non-being, and there's that, that it falls between them. And our ability to identify and say, oh, that's a thing, that is a mountain, or that is a coast, or whatever, we say, ah, that's a thing, and that is as being as that form. It has coherence as a toaster. And yay, until one day it doesn't work anymore and gets thrown in the uh, 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 in the recycling bin and uh, and it gets smashed up by the uh, by the recycling truck, and it's no longer in that form. It has it's in different it's in non coherence now. So in our Taiji forms, we are moving between being and non being constantly, and the absolutes are never reached. But if we ever get to total non being, we never get to total being. We're always moving between those and we create a form and we get as close as we can get to that form that we want and then we dissolve it and move into something else. And whatever we, um, we assume a form and that form is, we hang on to that form too long, it creates non-coherence. Even though it's like, oh, I got this coherence and I'm gonna hang on to it. Because I really, really like this thing. You know, it can be a state of being, a state of mind, it can be a, a physical state or whatever, you know, but it's if we hang on to it too long, then it creates a non-coherent energy as it starts to come apart because it is it has accomplished its its purpose, its task. So let's say you're you're taking a breath. You inhale, you say, ah, yes, lovely, lovely air. Yes, coming into my lungs. I'm filling up with this wonderful oxygen and it's going to all my little cells and it's, it's having having a great time doing that. And then, but eventually I say, oh, you know what? That breath has hung around a little too long and I better ah, exhale now and go toward non-being. That breath has moved from being to non-being. That's that's the way of it. That's that's how we how the whole thing is programmed. And in our Taiji form, we get to ride that train. Not only that, but we get to steer the train. We get to create forms that we want to see come into being. So this takes it a step beyond. I do my Tai Chi because I do what my teacher told me and because it's good for me. So we kind of like you're swallowing along and there, that we're sort of part of a process where we're, we're kind of engaged in this process, but more as passengers on that, on that train. But what we want to do is shift so that we are actually driving the train. We're the engineer. We're, we're saying, okay, this is this is where it's going. I am going to create this form 
I am going to dissolve this form. I'm going to create this new form. I'm going to dissolve that. And we keep going back and forth between those. And that by learning to take control of that process, you reclaim your power. You reclaim your ability to your agency in the world, your your ability to do stuff, your ability to occupy space and extend from that space. So the emphasis that I've placed so often on getting coherent that it get more coherent energy going on is still still valid. It's still important, but. It's also learning to be comfortable in the non-coherence as well and recognize that that is an essential part of the process. And this actually, it's that coming apart that it is like the soup, it's what makes the new form. We have to destroy something in order to create something. And that goes on and on and on and you get to uh, uh, the more you can be the creator of your form you're not just doing your form you're not just hanging out and just letting things happen to you you actually are making something out of nothing you are you're not just rearranging the furniture you are saying I'm going to put something there it's not there now, I'm going to put it there. And so by doing that, you take control of your body, your mind, your emotions, your energy, and you then are able to make this conscious shift into a super conscious state quite predictable. You can make it so that it's something that, oh yeah, I can do this anytime I want. <coughs> and the beauty of that is you don't have to. When you know you can do that, you don't have to be in a super conscious state all the time. Because you know that you can turn it on in any moment. And then you learn to say, okay, well, I want more of it. I want to be able to tolerate having even more of that super conscious state because it is an acquired taste. And you, you do that and you create that coherence, that form, and then you dissolve that. And you, ah, you return to neutral. You return to the non-being that allows you to create some more being. And that, that ebbs and flows, and and you get to play with that with the energy that gets created by that those transitions. So, uh, any thoughts on this before we uh, before we go on? Questions, thoughts? Good, good, good. All good. Okay. All right. So, all right. Let's moving on then. So the uh, you know the thing I've most associated with creating energetic coherence is you know I, I say about point and reach with your index finger and feel into that and that is something that is uh, that works you know I, I I came up with that because it works and works great and it's something you can you can teach to anybody. It's a, and it, you know, it works when they do it. It doesn't necessarily work when they don't do it. But if they actually execute that, that idea, just no oh, point reach, you feel into it, and you, whoa, you know, there suddenly you have a unified system that allows you to do cool stuff. It also brings your, body and mind into phase with each other. So whenever we're in our heavily into our thinking into the trance of objectification, 
we're in our heads and there is a, a split between body and mind. In fact, we may not even be aware of the fact that there's a body there that's supporting all this, act, this mental activity. But when we feel, whenever we shift our awareness out of that thinking mode and into the feeling mode, that allows us to move into other parts of the, the brain and the nervous system. And it connects us up to something that is, has been operating at reduced efficiency or in a state of non-coherence. We bring that more into coherence. We bring it more into form. We say, oh, okay, I've been kind of coasting now for a while. So now I think I want to get into a heightened state of coherence because I have something I want to do competently. I need body and mind to be in the same on the same page in order to do this thing. Let's say I've got a, a sink a sink a putt for the golf championship. Well, you know, if I'm in my head and I'm really worried about oh, what if I screw up? Then I create non-coherence. If I I get into that state where I feel my fingers and I create this energetic coherence, that, that body-mind integration, then I'm able to shift into this heightened state of awareness that allows me to you know, make that connection, be able to perform at my peak at that point. So at that point, I'm creating coherence. It's a decision that we make. And learning to make that decision is perhaps as, as an important part of our Kung Fu as anything we do physically. That our ability to create coherence out of nothing, to create a form out of nothing is essential to our you know, to a heightened level of, of Kung Fu, where we want to be able to, to function really well under even stressful circumstances. So, um, we're gonna play a little bit with, with coherence, non-coherence, and feeling into being and non-being, you know, just the, as we're moving, and as I say, these are directions we're moving toward non-being when we are dissolving the form. So if I have a ward off and I dissolve that, that form, it's gone. It's, it's moving toward non-being. But that's okay. I can create a new one. Or I can create a, a rollback. I can create you know, a push or a press. I can create these things because these are forms and I get to establish more coherence. And whenever I'm doing that, and I get into phase with my body mind, then my energy becomes more coherent. And that has positive rewards that my body mind says, yes, that's very nice, right? I like the feeling of that. Let's do more of that. And so I get to, I get to play with that some more. But then I say, okay, well, that's enough of that for now. Let's go back to watching tennis on TV. And that's fine too. I can do it. Or I can, that can oscillate between those as much as I like. So we're learning to control. And you know, something that uh, you know, Young Jun Ming wrote about, he talked about regulating the different systems of the body, your, you know, the, the different systems of yourself, you know, your your body, your mind, your chi, your emotions. These are things that we learn to regulate these things, which then creates the opportunity for this spiritual awakening to occur. That we can start to shift into what I call the eye of spirit and be able to function freely from that place. But we don't have to. We have that as a tool that we can use anytime we like, but we don't, we're not stuck there. We're not obsessed with being in that, in the, in the happy place all the time, because 
don't need it. If we can go there when we need it, that's fine. We can be, we can choose whatever emotion that we want of the the vast palette of human experience. We get to play all all the roles that we want to play in life. But we also know that we kind of have this escape key on the on the on the keyboard that says, yes, we can return to this coherence anytime we want. So once you stand up and let's um, let's do a little meditation with that. Let's begin with our three pillars. So what are we doing here? We're thinking our non-coherence and we're creating a highly coherent structure. We're exaggerating our coherence by aligning the structure in a way that permits more efficiency throughout the whole system and brings it into a heightened state of being. To begin with, settle over the balls of your feet. We're creating this, this energetic connection with the earth by doing that. Knees are unlocked. And that allows the energy to move through your legs more efficiently, more efficiently. So by settling over the balls of the feet, we are creating a yang structure that is, and it's an expansive one. It's moving in the direction of up and out. The energy is, is filling the whole system as we do that. Reach with the crown of your head and tuck in your chin. Open the jade pillow gate and face your skull. So feel yourself sinking into your feet, through the balls of your feet. Feel yourself reaching Reaching with the crown of your head, this is this is activating your knee wand. And it opens up a spiritual passage to the Yang Chi of the heavens. And also physically reaching like that lengthens your spine. As Rick pointed out just prior to this call, he uh, 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 just came back from his doctor today and he'd grown. He's no longer 5'8", he's up to 5'10". So uh, good job on that, Rick. <laughs> Keep it going. So the a similar thing has happened to me where I've gotten taller as I've gotten older. And this runs counter to the entropy that most of us encounter with and blocked by gravity. So, so what we're doing is we're creating space in our body. Relax your lower back. Allow your sacrum to drop, your coccyx to drop. Flattening out your lumbar somewhat. Of not forcing anything, just allowing it to, some of that curve to relax. Relax 
Reach to the elbows. Open up the shoulder joints. So your arms are slightly rounded. So instead of your arms collapsed like this, they're reaching out with the elbows. So feel into your hands and notice and add circulation there. Feel the chi in your hands, but also the, the blood getting more circulation. And that's an indicator of the circulation that's happening throughout your body. But even though you may have heard a lot of these words, heard me say these things before, and done these done this exercise before. This is the first time. That is, we're not just creating a facsimile of something you've done many times before. This is new. You've never been this person before. You've never, your body has never been this same way before. This moment in time is different than any other. But you're putting something here, this coherent structure, these three pillars, you're putting it there for the first time. Here. As you do this, you are creating a relationship with the present moment that is unique. Push away from the earth, and then stick down, spiral down, releasing your claw, releasing your hip joints, so you have that feeling. So, opening up the the chi flow between the legs and the torso. Point your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence of your whole body coming into a state of, of unification. The chi becomes one chi. That one chi will take on many aspects. You can direct it in different ways. You can give it different qualities. But it's still just the one. Feel that throughout your body. Now sink into your heels without leaning backward. You still want to be vertical, You're still reaching with the crown of your head. But what we're doing now is we're creating a yin shape. As you sink in your heels, the energy goes down goes down into the earth and we're moving in a yin direction. It's still the one chi, it's just that we're shifting the polarity consciously, deliberately, intentionally. Because we can. And the more familiar we become with that process, the ability to create yin energy, the more we're able to create yang energy. It's just to just chopping the vegetables for the soup. We empty out, allow that to settle in. And even as we empty out, though, we fill up with something different. The same energy, but we're getting a different, a different look. Instead of the sun, we're looking at the moon now. Instead of daytime, it's night. We get to explore what that feels like to move in that direction. And from the viewpoint of, a, of, of daytime, nighttime is a moving toward non-being. 
that we just expand our awareness to include both day and night, it's just both parts of the same process. Now go back into the balls of your feet and feel the yawn. Feel the expanding energy. with your wrist. Relax your arms and using the least amount of force. Reach. Feel as though your arms, your hands are being pulled up by the wrist. Very slowly and deliberately. And notice how you are doing this with your feet. Notice the feeling in your feet as you are doing. The feet are connected up to your hands, to your wrist, reach to the fingers, reach to the elbows. Open between your shoulder blades. Feel that expansion at the scapula. Yeah. Feel your fingernails as if you have claws there. You're reaching out and grabbing with those claws without creating any tension in your hand. Feel this creation that you're putting together right now. It's expanding young energy, filling up. Then sink into your heels, reach down with your elbows. And just like a wave that's retreating, come into the shore, now it's retreating, feel the energy. Uncreating, moving toward non being, dissolving, emptying out. That emptiness is moving toward a heightened potentiality. It is creating the necessary conditions for the expansion. It's like the exhale. That breath disappears, moves toward non-being. That's okay. We're going to create a new breath. Sink into the balls of your feet. Into the wrist. Even slower. Feel the connection to your feet as you reach with your wrist. Relax your shoulders, your elbows. Your fingers. Feel the fingers, feel those nails grabbing. Open between your shoulder blades. Feel into your coccyx, your tailbone and very gently wag your tail, connecting up your hands with your tail. Imagine your tail extending out from your body like a, talking lately about a dragon's tail, feel that, feel like a dragon's tail there. 
and feel that connecting up with your hands. Lengthen your heels. Now with your elbows. And dissolve that form. Get to the yin. Get accustomed to that emptiness. Allow the potentiality to, to build. We are mobilizing our team. Create that potentiality and to mobilize it, we feel into the poles in opposition. We start to create some energy flow. Now from stillness into motion. So feel the balls of your feet. With your wrist. Feel your tail as you reach with your wrist, your fingers. Forward very slowly with your right hand and feel your whole body moving with that. Feel your tail wagging to the right as you reach forward with your right hand. Thinking in uh, think the heel of your right foot and pull back your right hand back to the neutral. And from the ball of your left foot. And reach out. Feel that extension. Feel that form that you're creating. And this time, as you pull back, you're going to sink into your left heel and into the ball of your right foot. And reach out with your right hand. You're pulling back with your left hand, reaching forward with your right. Feel those two poles in opposition there. Your right heel, left ball, reach out with your left hand. Pulling back with your right hand. So feel that pull, feel the left hand forward. Back to center. Into your heels and dissolve that. Feel into the emptiness, letting all that creation go, uncreated. Embrace the non-coherence of that form. And notice as you, as that form becomes non-coherent, the form that you're in, in stillness, becomes highly coherent. So as your perspective changes, you're going to find something is 
coherent, something's not coherent, it's going to dance back and forth, depending on what you're looking at and how you're looking at it. Give me the ball to your feet. Your wrist. Feel the young expansion. Regulate the young expansion with your fingers. Open your your back and your shoulder blade. Feel your fingernails. How much young do you want right now? Get to control that too. Close with your right, pull back with your left. Close with your left, pull back with your right. Wag your tail. Reach with your right hand. Wag it to the left. Your left hand. Right hand, left hand, palm, and your hands face each other. Feel the chi between your hands. Now we're going to circle your hands to the left together as a unit. Wag your tail as you do that. Bring them in closer. Your body, wag your tail to the left. Wag your tail to the right as you reach out and circle to the left. Wag your tail to the left as you circle to the right. Reverse that. Wag your tail to the left as you circle to the right. Wag your tail to the right as you circle to the left. Feel the connection between your hands <coughs> and your tail. Feel this energetic creation that you are making right now. It is unique. Pause, hold that. It is a unique creation, something that you and you alone can do. Now throw it away. Make your heels. Throw that creation away. Yeah. Throw the energy away. We don't have to hang on to it. Feel into the stillness. As we plug into our narrow little unique universe that created by our body mind, we also resonate with something much vaster. Right now you can feel the, the connection to the big chi moving through you. Like a bottle in the ocean. There's water inside, there's water outside, but there's some 
something to be said for there's that bottle there. You got T inside, you got T outside. And you have the capacity to direct it to drive the train. Step in. Pause a moment. Think into your heels and just pause. Feel your sense of equilibrium. Energetic coherence. Unkink the hose. Give the ball to your feet and come up. Inhale. Gather. Fill. Big young. Expansive, and then stick it to your heels and exhale. Skin dissolve, empty. And look at that emptiness. Please have a seat. How was that? Lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> I I got it got a little complicated for me when uh, I had a lovely filament that God was holding onto my crown, <laughs> but uh, all the demons of the earth had just cemented my feet in, into the center of the earth. There was no, even, even when I was drifting into nothingness, my legs were solid cement going all the way down. That hasn't happened in a while. Mm. Gods and demons. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I've got high friends in low places. <laughs> cool. Any questions, thoughts, comments, complaints? Scott? Um, yeah, that was definitely an adult dose of chi there. Ooh. Um, yeah, even even in the even in the end, it was like this is all you know. There was a really a lot there. Yeah, I mean, I was literally had my had my balls on my feet off the ground <laughs> to be in my heels, and there was still a ton of chi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, takes practice to uh, to throw it away. Because we want to hang on to, we want to hang on to the energy, and to be able to, to, to empty out completely. It's, it's. I know I'm, I'm still working on it. I, I haven't perfected this by any means, you know. But it's, it's something that I like to. Oh, okay. Too much, too much, too much. Uh, throw away, throw away, throw away. Dissolve, move toward non-being, and it's something that it's, it's an ongoing process that uh, we can joyfully engage in that particular dance. Yeah, I also, but I, you know, I like, I like it to go away because I know what's coming afterwards, which is the spirit, which is the Shen. 
let the shen shine in. So I'm never, I'm, o- I'm always happy it stayed and I'm always happy that it flows out where it wants to be because then the light can come in. Beautiful, that's what we're working toward. Uh, I sometimes, like Scott, I, it, it, it doesn't all want to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so you know, I just have, to, okay, you know, that's just where I'm at right now. It's like how much, you know, how how much is in there and make sure everybody clean the house is cleaned out before I, uh, you know, before I shut down for the day. So it's, uh, but it's all part of my team. So if some wants to stay, I go stay, relax, oh, get yeah. up the place, you know, turn off the TV when you're done. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Jonathan. You know, I'm, I'm always fascinated by this tail. Um, it seems when I sit, you can't get a tail. I mean, it just goes away. And I'm just, I'm trying, and it's just not working for me in a way that works very well when I stand up. And, you know, where the legs meet the waist, you know, that's such an important junction point. And it seems like the tail has a way of integrating that and and kind of, makes the whole system cohere with everything I, in, a, in a very substantial way. That's a great you know, observation. A little thing that you did. You froze up there, Jonathan, but that was a great but observation. That makes, that makes you realize has cutting everything off as sitting really is not a good thing. I mean, I know you're a guy that says, hey, sit when you want to sit, stand when you want to stand. I know you like options, but I'm just, your tail is making me realize I'm sitting too much. That's all. Because <laughs> I can't find it. I'm sitting. It goes away. You know, sitting is the new smoking. Yeah, right. I've heard this. I've mm-hmm. heard this. But am I actualizing it? I've heard this for years now, right? It's been out there. But I'm not actualizing it. I'm still sitting too much. So I, I just want, like, even right now, I want my tail back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You, you 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 keep sitting. I'm just gonna stand up here. Okay. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Anybody else? Valerie. I'm just gonna throw this in there. I know what helps me in finding um my central vertical axis and you know. There's the tailbone, or feet, tailbone, shoulders, knee one. But I also, for me, have to remember to also lift from the clavicular notch mm. because that adds that adds inches, <laughs> you know, for me. I agree. But um, yeah, just just throwing that in there didn't mean yeah. anything. And sometimes forget to mention that, but it's. Uh... There's so many, so many other things I get, I talk about. I, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I like that yeah. phrase. Opening the, opening the shoulders, real important. But I like that phrase so much, clavicular notch. It's one of my favorite phrases. It, it, it has a nice ring. <laughs> so I'm not going to forget it. <laughs> you should, you should definitely get a T-shirt with the notch on the T-shirt. <laughs> And the Victor Notch on the top and the bottom. There we go. That's right. <laughs> that's your, that's your Christmas present. Uh, great. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank great you, Maria. Love you, Maria. Love you, Maria. Love you guys. Love you. Bye bye. Love you. Take care. Bye.